Getting your hands on these isn't easy. So that was me a few years ago, worried, stressed, feeling like I could never pass this exam. And you might be in the exact same scenario right now. And in this video, I wanna break down 11, I'm gonna have to Photoshop a finger in here, 11 tips to passing the OSCP first time. If you're watching this video, you probably already know what the OSCP is, but just in case you have any doubt, I'll tell you now. It's a 24 hour hacking exam, followed by another 24 hours of report writing. So it's 48 hours in total from start to finish. And those are back to back. There's no days in between. Meaning you have 24 hours, 23 hours, 45 minutes really, but you've got 24 hours to hack into as many of the machines in the exam as possible, collect enough points. And then at the 23 hour, 45 minute point, the VM turns off. And that's it. Your attempt is over. What you then have to do is quickly get some sleep, which is really hard because you got all this blood pumping through your brain. You've been hacking for almost a whole day straight. And now you're trying to sleep, knowing that in a few hours you have to wake up and write the best report you've ever written to date. Prepare to be dazzled. And if you think you can do that whilst just sat at a desk all day, typing without eating, drinking, walking, etc., be my guest. I wouldn't recommend it. I've seen some people online talking about retaking the OSCP for their fifth or sixth time. Not only is that expensive, wow, that takes serious dedication. My hat goes off to you, honestly, if you're doing that five or six times, because it's a beast. Even in the days after I finished my report writing, my guts, my body was still, it still felt weird. And it's really hard to sleep as well because you've put so much effort over the last months or years into building up to this exam. And then you end up spending a whole week refreshing your emails every five seconds, hoping that offensive security are gonna send you that one that says you passed. So let's try and pass the OSCP first time if we can. And these are my 11 tips to help make that happen. Number one, timings. Timings are really important in this exam. You need to know when you perform best and when you start to get tired. For me, I get tired around two or three in the morning and in the build-up to doing the OSCP, I was spending so much time on Hack the Box and in the OSCP labs until two or three in the morning and I consistently noticed a drop-off in my ability to focus around that time. So I thought, I'll start the day around 7 a.m. and there was an exam slot available at seven, so I took that one. That meant I got up at six, showered, dressed, teeth brushed, and sat down at my desk, ready to hack for 7 a.m. That gave me from 7 a.m. to about 2 a.m. of peak performance hacking. If I started the exam at noon, I would have had 14 hours of good quality hacking time. And because I started it at 7 a.m., I got way more hours. So think about when you start to flag, when you get tired, and plan back. You might want to start at 12 noon because you wake up late in the morning and you stay up really late at night. That's fine. Everybody has their own preference, but know what yours is and give yourself the biggest window of opportunity to pass. Stretch. You're going to be sat at a desk for up to 48 hours with a little bit of sleep in the middle. It's not to be understated how much that takes a toll on the body. I did lots of stretching throughout my exam and I was still a bit achy the day after. So if you can and you're able-bodied, get up, walk around inside the office, do some stretches if you can, maybe get out into the garden if you have one or a piece of grass outside for some fresh air and go through some stretches. At a bare minimum, do move your arms around, shrug your shoulders, wiggle your head backwards and forwards, get on YouTube, type in how to stretch at a desk. Eat well. Food and drink fuel your body. But if you wake up on exam day, smash a Red Bull, a couple of packets of crisps, and a chocolate bar, you might not be in the best position to sit at a desk for 24 hours and perform at peak. 
My go-to for breakfast is porridge. It's a low glycemic index food, meaning that it releases energy slowly and evenly into the body. I think it also doesn't spike your blood sugar. I'm not a dietitian, do your research, but I think you're looking for low glycemic index foods. A little bit of Red Bull or something could be fine as a little pick-me-up if you're flagging during the afternoon, or a coffee. Cheers. Just a little bit. But don't start the day that way and don't carry on the day like that. Eat well, eat consistently, have snacks on hand, and don't go crazy on sugar or caffeine. Exercise. Don't just work at that desk all day. That's a surefire way to either get a headache, fail the exam, or both. Take a break from the desk. If you can, go for a walk, go for a run, have a swim, do a weights workout. It's up to you, but Take a break, get the blood pumping back up into your brain, through all your muscles. It'll make you feel fantastic. And it's a nice way to detox and refresh, maybe halfway through the exam. Support. You can do the OSCP on your own if you want. You can make your own tea and coffee and make your own lunch and bring yourself snacks. But it's undeniably easier if you have someone around to help you out. So if you have a friend or a family member who's willing to support you on that first day, the exam day where you do all the hacking, I highly recommend you try and get them on side and explain what it is you're about to undertake and tell them the types of things that you'd like them to do. How you like your coffee or how you like your tea. Make it as easy for them to help you as possible. If you need to write down exactly what time and what snack you want and what you want in your sandwiches, for example, or what type of soup you want or what you want for dinner, make a menu and say, everything's here, it's in the fridge, could you do that for me? You never know, they might say yes. Having that level of support was fantastic for me on the day. My awesome wife took care of all of those things. Notes. I've talked before on this channel about how to take hacker notes. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link in the description. But basically what it says is have good notes and use them. And the way I do it is in a tool called Gitbook. I put all my little commands in there and when I want to use a command, I just hit the copy button and then paste it into the command line and it's done. A lot of the commands you're going to have to type in this exam are simple commands like changing directories and things, but there's a whole lot of other commands like generating payloads and trying to remember SQL injection techniques. So if you have those to hand, it makes it a lot easier to reference rather than trying to mess around in the moment and fix bugs. So thank you. Hack the box. I'll be honest. I probably wouldn't have passed my OSCP first time round if it hadn't have been for Hack the Box and IPSEC. Credit where credit is due, that pairing is unbelievable. I've got a whole separate video on Hack the Box, which I'll put in the old description. If you want to go somewhere and actually be taught how to hack into about 200 different machines, Hack the Box is the place. IPSEC has videos, he will walk you through every single machine. You will learn so much by watching Ipsex videos, all the little tricks using things like Tmux, how to use Vim well, so many techniques. I can't even bring them to the front of my mind at this point, but it is unrivaled. You can do Try Hack Me, you can do Vulnhub, you can do a whole bunch of things, but the bottom line is Hack the Box is the winner in this space. And one of the cool things about Hack the Box is that there's a few people have generated playlists. I think I followed TJ Knoll's playlist for the OSCP. I'll put a link in the description. And it's just Ipsex videos organized that are similar to OSCP type machines, but you're actually being taught how to hack all those machines. So if you're prepping for your OSCP, I would recommend you go and smash all of TJ Knoll's videos in that playlist. And I would also recommend you set yourself a challenge of hack five hack the box machines, easy and medium level, I'd recommend, in 24 hours. If you can do that, even with all the tutorials to hand, like the PDFs or Ipsex videos, you're heading in the right direction. Honestly, some of the hack the box machines I found were a little bit trickier than the OSCP machines. The machines on the OSCP are very realistic. Some of the Hack the Box machines have weird little quirks to them. So don't be disappointed if you can't blindly hack five Hack the Box machines in 24 hours. Some of them are quite tricky compared to the OSCP machines. But it's still a fantastic challenge. Can you hack five machines on Hack the Box? If you can, in 24 hours, you're probably ready for your OSCP.
smaller courses first. If you're unsure about taking the OSCP, why don't you take something smaller first? Something like the EJPT, which is eLearn Securities Junior Pen Tester course. I took it before I did my OSCP and it was great. It was a really nice insight into penetration testing. And to pass the exam, you actually have to hack in, which is the whole point of learning these skills, right? So it's not some tick box exercise like other exams. You will actually have to do some hacking. A lot simpler than the OSCP, but it's pretty cool. They give you a little quiz. You have to answer questions in the quiz and the only way you could answer those questions is by hacking into the computer systems and getting the answers. I think in my exam, it was like a rock band's website. And some of the questions were things like, what year was such and such album released? And you hacked into the record labels web server, pulled up the SQL database and find all the entries and then answered the question. Really, really cool exam. So if you're not ready for your OSCP, why not have a look at the EJPT? I can recommend it. I've done it. I enjoyed it. Maybe you might like it. Finish the lab report. As part of the training course, you get this thick manual and it teaches you how to hack. If you read that manual front to back and then sit down in front of the exam, you will fail because the exam goes beyond that material. You, they can't just teach every single thing. You have to do your own practical learning. But at the end of each section, there are questions that need to be answered. You don't have to answer them, but if you do answer them, it's called a lab report. Completing the lab report gives you 10 extra points. It was five when I did it, it's 10 these days. So that takes a huge pressure off during the exam. So when you're getting towards the end of the day and you're tired and you haven't popped every single machine in the environment, you can think, I've done enough, I've passed. Hydrate. You are basically a big bag of water, no offense. Drinking water is really important. And for the 48 hours that you're gonna be doing this exam, I would recommend that you take drinking your water a little bit more professionally. I recommend you get a bottle, preferably one not like this, one that you can see through and see the water. It might help create some pressure for you to drink. If you've only drank a little bit out of the top and six hours passes, you might see the bottle and think, oh, I need to drink more water. But if you can't see the water inside, you might not feel as much pressure. So something to think about. Temperature. Some parts of the world are really cold. Others are really hot. Either way, you have to make sure that you're working in a nice environment. If you have aircon, make sure you know what setting you need it to be on. And if you need to heat your house, make sure you have that sorted as well. The room I'm in right now is a great room to do the OSCP in because it has nice even light throughout the whole day pretty much and the sun doesn't come flying in through that window and just melt everything on the inside. My home office on the other hand, where most of my videos are shot, in the afternoon the sun bakes me in that room and it's a smallish room so with the door closed when I'm recording it can get a bit hot. I do have a blackout blind that I put down, but it still is warm inside that room. Even with the Dyson fan on circulating in the air, I wouldn't really like to be sitting the OSCP in summer in that office. I'd probably set up in here to do it. So think about where you're going to perform best in your home to do this exam. So that's it. Those are my 11 top tips for passing the OSCP first time every time. Please don't be disheartened if you don't pass first time. I know some great cybersecurity people who failed their first attempt. I wish you the very best with the exam. If you want to drop me a message about it, leave a comment or jump onto LinkedIn, add me on LinkedIn and you can message me on there. Happy to answer any questions while I have capacity. And I look forward to seeing your email 